Welcome to Into the Night. I'm Nari, your guide on today's excursion down a twisted path. Be careful not to get lost. Be it dark or light, it's easy to lose your way. Are you ready? Then let's begin. The Green-Eyed Monster Ian McAllister walked through the crowd, deep in thought. He'd waited a long time for this day, an entire year in fact. It was his favorite day of the year, and the parade would start soon. He smiled. As a young boy, his father used to have him ride on his shoulders so he could have a better view. See that parade, laddie? It's just for you. Ian would laugh and clap. It wasn't until he was eight or nine that he realized his father had been pulling his leg. The St. Patrick's Day parade happened every year, regardless of Ian McAllister. Ironically, it was the only day his father set aside for him during the year. In that sense, the parade was just for Ian. The other 364 days, his father devoted to his true passion, the love of money. He could hear his mother's excuses. Now, Ian... Your father loves you very much. He does this for your future. He's always wanting you to have the money you need to build your own fortune someday. Ian never understood how his mother could be so forgiving. For God's sake, mother, he neglected you too, Ian muttered as he wove his way through the gathering parade watchers. He knew he had to get where he was going, but he stopped for a moment to take in the spectacle of the crowd. There was something vital and energizing about the crush of humanity around him. People travel distances to be here today. For some, it might be the only time they ever saw the parade in person. Ian realized he was lucky to be here every year for this event. The legacy of the parade was the one thing his father left him. Ian shrugged off his monetary inheritance. He resented and despised material wealth. He equated it to the cold relationship he had with his father. Instead of taking his son fishing or teaching him all the things fathers should teach their little boys, Ian's father abandoned him to pour over stock reports or financial statements. You were always after that end of the rainbow, weren't you, Da? He asked his father the question when the man was on his deathbed. A twinkle formed in his father's eye and the last memory Ian would ever have of the man who didn't raise him was the consuming glee his father felt over money. Anger welled up in Ian. It was always about the damn money, wasn't it? Never mother. Never me. Frankly, Ian was glad his father was dead. It saved him from having to tolerate the selfishness of his father's ways. God rest your soul, mother. You deserved better than him. As much as he despised his father, Ian adored his mother. Whatever goodness is in me, came from you, Ma. Ian checked the large clock on the building across the street. He needed to be on his way. He couldn't waste time stewing over the past. He had tasks at hand to attend to before he could relax and enjoy the parade. Every year he dedicated his St. Patrick's Day activities to his father. He chuckled each year and said, See that parade, Daddy? It's just for you. The sentimentality of it all made him feel at peace. Heading north along the parade route, he felt the chilly wind bite into his bare hands. He shoved them into his coat pockets, and his right hand toyed with the Monopoly game pieces he carried. It was a tradition of his to carry them on this day of Irish pride. He lovingly referred to the small metal figures as his lucky charms. He fiddled with them in his pocket, and his excitement and adrenaline increased with every step. He spotted the first person he needed to meet on today's adventure. Personal business had to be handled with Mr. Isaiah Parker, president of the Central Banking and Loan Association. Ian quickened his steps. He was eager to meet Mr. Parker in person. Before today, Ian spent hours on the internet studying the bank and its president. In honor of his father, each St. Patrick's Day parade, he made a point of meeting the movers and shakers of the financial realm. Normally, he blocked out his father's greed, but on this one day a year, he allowed himself the pleasure of introducing himself to the type of people his father idolized. He pushed his way through the crowd and carefully wedged his way next to Mr. Parker. Ian persuaded the banker that he needed a few moments of his time. 
they slipped into an area between two buildings for privacy. I have a lifetime of questions for you. He continued with the normal introduction and background story he gave these dignitaries on such occasions. Before he left Isaiah Parker, he embraced him. It was exhilarating to feel the life force between them. Meeting you was one of the best moments of my life. I apologize for making you miss the parade. Parker said nothing as Ian slipped a Monopoly piece, the little dog, into the man's hand. Ian left his new acquaintance and rushed back onto the street. A high school marching band from Indiana passed by while he was with Parker. The drumbeat of the cadence still filled the air, and Ian found his footsteps aligning with the rhythm. The next person he wanted to find was Barry Hoffman, the hedge fund executive. The rotund man in the blue suit, sporting a bright green tie for the occasion, stood on the southwest corner of the street as Ian approached. With an outstretched hand, Ian greeted the man. Mr. Hoffman, it's a pleasure to meet you. Hoffman was caught by surprise, but he didn't refuse going into a quiet space to talk with Ian. Much the same as he had with Parker, he had a heartfelt exchange with the man. When they parted, they embraced, and Ian placed a Monopoly piece, this time the shoe, into the man's hand. Ian smiled as he walked down the street. A passing band played Danny Boy, and Ian broke out into song. His mother sang him to sleep with that beautiful tune every night when he was young. He would always associate the song with his dear mother. One more person remained this year to meet. Once he had a few moments with Alexander Borloff, the Russian financier, he could check off the last name on this year's list and spend the rest of the day drinking beer and eating corned beef and cabbage. Borloff was tougher to find, however. Instead of watching from the street, he admired the Irish tradition while sipping vodka and looking out of his 40th floor office window. The view was truly spectacular from that angle. Borloff could enjoy the festivities without pressing the flesh with drunken commoners on the street. Ian stopped in front of the building and peered upward. That elitist snob is just the kind of man Dahl worshipped. The funny thing is, Borloff wouldn't have given my father the time of day. Ian tipped his hat to the doorman and entered the posh office building. The parade was a diversion that made it easy to access Borloff's office suite. While not wanting to take part in the celebration himself, Borloff allowed his staff time off to take in the sights of the famous parade. Few people remained in the building. Most were jostling for a view of the street side. I'm sure it makes him feel like a real saint to give the peons a chance to watch the Irish tradition unfold. The elevator door dinged, and opened to the 40th floor. Ian walked with purpose past the empty reception area and quietly opened the office door. There sat Borloff in his leather office chair, sipping vodka and feeling superior to the throngs of humanity on the streets below. Only when Ian was next to him did he realize he had a visitor. Who are you? How did you get in here? I came through the front door, like everyone else. Ian smiled and pulled out his well-used tool of preference. A shiny 12-inch blade, made of the finest metal, specially sharpened to surgical-grade perfection. The knife was one of Ian's prized possessions. Though each year he used a slightly different approach, this blade, made in Dublin, was a sentimental favorite. What is this about? Borloff reached for the alarm button under his desk, but Ian stopped him. This is a wee Irish tradition I began many, many years ago, in celebration of the death of my father. All he ever cared about was money. That pot of gold under the rainbow was his only love, and my sweet mother and I paid the price. I grew up jealous of his affection for shiny things. Ian glanced at his knife. Now, I enjoy my own shiny things. Ian paused for a few seconds. My dear Ma told me that one day, I too would adopt my family heritage and would relentlessly pursue that pot of gold. Ian's eyes grew misty. I can hear her voice now. My lad, your father can't help who he is. Neither can you. Someday, you will see. But I've taken my own path. I won't be a slave to gold. The Russian cringed in his chair as Ian drew closer. I have my own St. Patty's Day celebration. I choose three financial leaders to murder during the St. Patrick's Day parade. 
You, Mr. Borloff, are my third. You will complete my list for the year. The cornered man looked desperately about for some means of escape. Horror showed in his eyes as he tried to make sense of what was happening. You aren't a man. What are you? He shouted as fear overtook him. I, I am no man. I'm a leprechaun from the old country. The bloodletting was so effortless and smooth that Borloff scarcely knew he'd been cut until his suit seeped red. As life slipped out of the once important businessman, Ian McAllister embraced him. Into his hand, he slipped the top hat from his collection of Monopoly pieces. And now, ye have my lucky charm. The elevator ride was exhilarating, and once in the lobby, Ian briskly walked through the doors and went out onto the street. With marching bands playing in the background, he headed for his favorite pub. Mugs of green beer and heaping plates of corned beef and cabbage awaited him. Once seated in his booth, he raised his glass and smiled. This parade is just for you, Da. Thank you for joining me for Into the Night, an anthology series written by Caroline Giamanco, narration and sound design by Nari Kwok, theme music by Nico Rodriguez, all original music and editing in part provided by Flyboy Entertainment. You can find our links in the show notes. Please remember to like and subscribe, and if you enjoy what you hear, please leave us a five-star review to help other excursionists to join us. You can find us on your favorite podcast directory. See you next time. And remember... Whether in the shadows or in the daylight, all twisted paths take you into the night. Into the Night is a Creative Typo Entertainment production.